Hey everybody, hope you're all having a great day. Um, I wanted to tell y'all first of all, um, I'm wearing the same shirt I, I wore in yesterday's video, but that's because I shot these videos one after the other in the same day. I didn't want y'all to think I just wore the same shirt all the time, but I shot them all on the same day and I'm gonna upload them um, one each day. So um, going on with the Leatherman Signal here, the Gear Runner Edition, uh, I'm gonna show y'all how good the saws are that come with these multi-tools. Um, this saw is very, very sharp. It's very toothy, and uh, it should cut through its limb like nobody's business. So uh, there's a limb right here, it's kind of hanging over, and I'm just gonna cut off probably this one right here. If I, now it's kind of hard to do because it's kind of hanging there, and uh, it's hard to get a little leverage on it. I hope you can see it. Um, but it is going through it really good. There we go after I got it started. And we're almost through it, there we go. So as you can see here, it cut through it pretty good. Now, um, if that thing hadn't have been pulling against me and I could have got a little bit better leverage on it, um, it would have sawed through it even better because once I got into it, um, it started going really well and it started taking out big chunks. But uh, you can saw through some pretty big pieces of wood with this pretty quickly, actually. As you can see, um, you can cut through, um, that's about as big as your thumb, and it cut through it pretty fast. So these saws on these multi-tools, um, they cut really, really well. And be careful when you're cleaning it out because they're very toothy and very sharp, but they stay sharp even after cutting through that. So uh, I just wanted to show you a quick video of how well these saws work. Um, you know, very seldom am I gonna use a saw in my everyday life. You, you never know when you might need it, and I'm glad they put it on here, but I wanted to show you how well they work because I have used these saws before, and these multi-tools just cutting down little limbs like that to make tender and stuff. So if you camp, and this is kind of what this is, you know, um, centered towards is like an outdoorsman tool, a survival tool and stuff like that. So they did put a really, really good saw in it, as you can see. Uh, and most Leathermans have these kind of saws in them and uh, they're great for cutting down shrubs like that. You can, you can even cut through bigger things than I did right there. Um, with, with little effort, especially if you can get them down lower to you where you can get some leverage on them and they're not really pulling against you. So if you have a tree that has a limb that's lower, you can really get into it. You know, you can cut through some big stuff with that and just a little bit of time with little effort with these saws. Um, I appreciate you watching this video. There again, I just wanted to show you how easy it was to use this saw and uh, how good it was. And you know, if you're living in, a, in an urban, you know, an urban environment, you may not need this as much, but if you're an outdoorsman and you go camping and you build fires and stuff, um, this is probably gonna come in really handy someday. So if you're looking for a good outdoor multi-tool, like I said in my last video, I will buy one of these. Um, I think this is one of the best multi-tools I've actually ever held in my hand. So today, what we're gonna be doing is using the knife on the Leatherman Signal to make feather sticks. So uh, I wanna show you how to make feather sticks using your Leatherman signal. This signal, you know, is directed towards survival and making feather sticks is part of survival. So let's turn the camera around and see how easy it is to uh, make feather sticks. I'm actually gonna use the limb that I cut down yesterday. I hope that's fairly straight. So let's just see how good it cuts. These are some thick, Thick feather sticks. There we go. Now we're getting some more fine ones. I'm actually cutting one through it, which I don't want to do. Um, you can see here how easy it is. That cuts through it effortless, effortlessly. Um, I mean, just effortlessly. I'm going to cut it off right there. Got a hand on me. So uh, you can see right there um, how easy it is to make those feather sticks. Um, could have made them finer um, if you want to. Um, this does cut through there really, really easy. As you can see, um, it takes, it's just effortless. You can make, you know, very fine kindling with this. Um, as these are coming off, you can just um, 
collect these up to make a fire, you know, kindling for the fire, um, make your little bird's nest with it. Um, but you can see here, it cuts through it really, really easy. Just so easy and effortless. I mean, I'm not putting hardly anything in this. And you can see how well that cuts those up. Um, so I wanna show a video how easy it was to use that. Um, also, you can also use this to make steaks. You know, you could, you could sharpen this out like this right here. And uh, if you need to make a steak to put in the ground, now you have a steak to put in the ground. Um, that being said, you can also turn it over. You can see how crooked this is. You can turn it over here and uh, take your saw and uh, cut right through it. Well, I say right through it, you know, it's kind of putting in a bind the way I'm holding it. I'm turning it over. There we go. Once I got it going, I was in good shape. I just had to get it going and it cuts right through that like it ain't nothing. And that's actually bigger than the other side was. Um, it wasn't the saw's fault. Um, I just kind of had it in a bind, but once I lit up on the pressure and found the sweet spot, you saw it cut right through it like it was nothing. So since this video is only like three minutes long, I want to show you something else. So I showed you before, it has a hammer right there. So you have a stake. So if you're trying to make shelter or something like that, Let's see if we can angle it down a little more. You could actually put this in the ground. And now your stake's in the ground is secure. So the hammer does work on these. You know, however deep you need it to go, you can go deeper. That's totally up to you. Um, but the hammer works well on this as well for driving stakes in the ground or, you know, just whatever you need to do with it. Um, you might need to hammer a nail for some odd reason. Um, it is kind of narrow, so kind of watch yourself when you're hitting that nail. But uh, I would use it for driving stakes in the ground if it was if it was me. Um, so I've showed you how to make feather sticks. I've showed you how to make a stake. I've showed you how to use the hammer. Um, so tomorrow I'll show you how to use the fair seam rod. Um, today we're going to be doing a review of the three tools on the inside. Um, I thought I'd do all three of these at once because I'm not sure I can make a video long enough um, just on one of them to make a big difference. You know, if I can't make a video at least three or four minutes long, and even three or four minutes is a real short video, but if I can't make one three or four minutes long and it's going to be, you know, 45 seconds, it probably isn't worth putting up to me. So uh, I'm going to do all three of them at one time. So the first tool you see here is a, um, a screwdriver. So uh, you can't shut that. I just found that out. So you have to leave this open when you're using it. So what you could do here is kind of hold it like this and get a little bit more leverage on it. But I have a holster here and you know, it's just the one thing I picked up that actually had a screw in it. The screw is for retention. Um, you could use this for anything that, you know, was a flathead or a Phillips head screw. But I just wanted to show you that you can adjust the tension on a holster or whatever it is it may be that you need to use the screwdriver for, this will work for. I know that's short and that's why I didn't want to just do a review of just the screwdriver and just show you that the screwdriver does work in a screw hole. So, you know, screwdriver does work um, for whatever you need to do. Like I said, I mean, I just wanted to show you that, you know, it would fit, even though it's pretty flat, it does fit, you know, in a Phillips head and does turn. And of course the flat head will fit in anything that's flathead. And I'm sure we all know that. So you do have your lock right here, push in on it and turn that back down. So next is a can opener. Now I don't have a can to open. Um, so I can't show you how to use the can opener. Um, there is wire strippers right here. There is one thing I wanna show you first of all, before I use that, um, I will shut that just for safety reasons. I don't wanna stab that in my hand. And uh, I'm sure I could have probably did it without it, but you know, I didn't wanna show you guys and teach you all bad habits of leaving stuff open. Um, here's some little bitty fine um, wire. It's really, really fine wire. So I'm sure these wire cutters are gonna have no problems at all cutting through this. Um, yeah, I mean, it just cuts right through it. 
like butter. And these are replaceable and they do have some hard wire cutters at the bottom. So you can cut through a lot um, thicker wire than this right here. Now there is one thing on the second tool that I just had open, that's the can opener, and it is wire strippers. Now I have never used wire strippers like this. So you're either gonna see a big epic fail or you're gonna see somebody learn how to use wire strippers. So let's just see what happens here. Um, I have no clue what I'm doing at all with this. Um, hmm, that actually did strip it. I really, 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 well, as you can see right there, it stripped it right out. The wire came right out of it. Um, the way I did that, and I don't know if this is the correct way to do it, I actually put it in here like this and drug it across it like that right there. And as you can see, it stripped more wire out. Um, this wire does have, you know, insulation on the inside as well. Um, these are really small. I don't know if it would work on those. I mean, we can try it. I don't know if it'll work. Um, actually it did look right there. Uh, so these wire strippers on this actually do work. I'd never used them. I may be using them wrong, but if I'm using them wrong, they sure do work. So, uh, that's the way I would use the wire strippers may not be the way Leatherman intended it, but it's the way gear runner intended it. And this is the gear runner edition. So we're going to use it that way. Um, last but not least, if I can get this out, oh, there's a little hook right here that you grab and kind of pull up your fingers is the awl. Now, like I said in the other video, it is good that this awl does lock. I do have a belt here. Um, this is the belt I wear to work. As you can see, I've lost a lot of weight and added a lot of holes. Um, I gained a little weight back, so I'm not technically in this back hole anymore. I think I'm in this hole right here. But when I first started wearing this belt, I actually had to make a hole up here in the front. So I have still, I've still kept off a lot of weight. But we're gonna take this and make another hole in it just to do it, just see how hard it is. Um, so you just take it, stick it in there, start twisting it around, um, just in a circle, like so. Um, you know, usually I'd use a drill bit for this. Um, as you can see, it's starting to come through. Right there, it did just come through. So take it on the other side, like so. Give it a couple more twists. And, uh, Right there's you another hole. And let's just see if the, the belt goes in it. So if you're out and you're stranded in the woods and you need to make another hole in your belt, that's not quite big enough. So we'll actually just make a little bit bigger hole. Um, pretty easy to do, no big deal. You've already got this far. Um, that's still not wanting to, there we go. Yep, went in that time. There it is. So the all works pretty good too. Um, that was pretty little effort um, for the most part. Uh, you do have to put just a little bit of pressure on it, but that is a good awl and it went through pretty quick. So uh, I do like that. There's a lot of stuff you could use this for. Um, that's just one example, but there are many other things you could use this for as well. So there's just a few, a few tools left on this that I've not reviewed yet and showed you all how to use. Um, we went over pretty much everything. Um, some of the last things are, the bits here, now I don't have any, you know, bolts or anything that takes a, a quarter inch or anything like that, but I will show you that I do have a, a regular Black & Decker um, little kit here that I've had forever. I've had this kit forever. Um, let's say you need a half inch socket. Um, you could put that in there and get some leverage on it and have a half inch socket. Um, you know, they, Leatherman does sell bits for this. Um, if you need a screwdriver, um, there you go. It's just your common size um, bits that go into these. I think they're quarter inch, they just go in there. I believe that's what they are. Um, don't quote me on that, I could be wrong, but I think that's what they are. And then, uh, you know, sockets too. The only thing that you'll have a problem with on this, I mean, you can use extenders in it, but when you turn it over, they fall out. So. This isn't magnetized. I don't know how they would have magnetized it. Um, would I've liked to see this not be here and a magnet be on the back side? I think I would rather not have the small hole and have a magnet on this side, but that's not a big deal. Um, I mean, if you're in a pinch and you're using this, um, you've probably got bigger problems and not be able to hold your, your socket or your um, screwdriver. So, you know, you could just hold it like this and that way it won't fall out. That's just a little, a little tip right there that you can actually keep it in there. 
So uh, the last thing is the pliers. Now this is just an ordinary coat hanger. Um, back when I was younger, I used to uh, do car stereos a lot and stuff like that. So I would use coat hangers to fish the wire through like the boots and stuff and the firewall to get the wire, like the, the positive cable into the vehicle. So what you could do with this is just take your pliers and I just wanna show you this works. You can use pliers for anything. So, you know, you get it unwound like this and then you don't want this big old twisty mess here. So you just take your pliers and uh, start, you know, working it like this and it just breaks it in two. Now there is hard wire cutters on the bottom of this and if this messes it up, Rob, I'm sorry, but um, we'll see if they'll cut it because it is hard wire cutters and this is hard wire. Uh, cut right through it. So you can either use, you know, the bottom or the top. It doesn't make any difference. Um, so I do really like this multi-tool. I think it's a great multi-tool really and truly. Uh, I will buy one of these. Uh, Leatherman did a good job there again. And uh, I'd like to thank Jack for sending this one more time. And uh, I'd like to congratulate Rob for winning it. Um, if you like this video, um, please like, share, and subscribe. Um, give it a big thumbs up. We'll see you next time.